This is the new 2022 Nami Burn E2, which looks, rides, and feels like the original, but costs about $3,500. This reduced performance version is basically the iPhone SE of premium electric scooters. It not only keeps much of what we love about the Burn E, but also adds a few noticeable improvements. In this review, we dive into the five new features and compare the Burn E2's tested performance against comparable scooters, including the original Burn E. We'll also reveal the two features they took away and whether we think you'll miss them or not. Don't forget to use our exclusive $100 discount code and the purchase link that you'll find in the video's description. The original Nami Burn E is a 106 pound beast scooter designed by former Cabo sales manager, Michael Shaw. If you remember, it's the one that shocked us back in 2021 when it broke records during 13 of 16 ESG performance tests. The new, slightly lighter Burn E2 looks the same, but has much smaller motor controllers and a smaller battery. Let's check out how those changes affect performance. The Burn E2 surprised us, covering 49.1 miles on our range test course in top performance mode, only 4.2 miles short of the original Burn E under identical conditions. Not bad considering the Burn E2's 20% smaller battery. The acceleration of the Burn E2 also completely exceeded our expectations, keeping up with the world's biggest and fastest electric scooters from 0 to 35 miles per hour. It's only at speeds of 40 miles per hour and above that the bigger scooters begin to pull away. The Burn E2's braking performance was basically unchanged, stopping from 15 miles per hour in 10.3 feet versus the original's 10.2. The new Logan two-piston hydraulic brakes on the Burn E2 feel noticeably better than the nut brakes on the original Burn E. The more expensive Burn E2 Max will come with four-piston Logan calipers with even larger brake pads, so we expect its brakes to feel even better. The Burn E2 can sustain 35 miles per hour or more, climbing just about any hill. On our 10% grade hill climb test, the Burn E2 was the fourth quickest production scooter we've ever tested, arriving just half a second behind our all-time champ, the original Burn E. Top speed is where the reduced performance spec becomes clear. With an ESG certified top speed of 43.8 miles per hour, the Burn E2 is a full 15 miles per hour slower than the original. Now, I love going fast on electric scooters. It's one of my favorite things to do. But realistically, unless I'm out testing, I rarely want to go faster than 40 miles per hour. So 99% of the time, I wouldn't feel held back by only being able to go 43.8 miles per hour. So for me, giving up some top speed and saving $1,400 feels totally worth it. Nami is the Ferrari of the electric scooter world, and I can say that from firsthand experience. The hand-welded frame, carbon fiber stem, adjustable shocks, Logan brakes, and new Tuoba tires give the Burn E2 better ride quality than literally any other scooter I've ridden, including the original Burn E. Let me show you my favorite part. The shocks let you dial in rebound damping from bouncy to super smooth. The Burn E is the only high power scooter that combines adjustable suspension with a welded tubular frame, and that's why handling just feels so good. Right out of the box, handling is exceptional, but if you wanted to handle like the race bike I used to win a motorcycle road racing championship, check out our NAMI setup video to help you get the most out of your Burn E, no matter which version you have. In terms of raw power, it's hard to tell the two versions apart below 35 miles per hour. The sine wave motor controllers give you ultra smooth throttle control, even in X mode, but it also has five customizable riding modes if you want to tame it even further. The scooter does have its quirks though. The dead space in the throttle is still there, but still easy to avoid. Anchor your thumb on the housing and rock your thumb into the lever. The throttle begins to engage when your thumb is even with the housing. Anchoring also prevents accidental throttle when you hit a bump. High speed stability has been improved in two ways. The bars are now 27 inches wide versus 24 and a half. And more importantly, the Burn E now comes with an adjustable steering damper. And our setup video covers how to use that too. The wider bars are also half an inch taller, making this the tallest scooter in our database and a good fit for riders from five foot seven to well over six feet tall. 
The enormous deck is also good for larger feet and lets you change your stance during longer rides. We covered the steering damper, wider bars, and Logan brakes, but here's a breakdown of some other important changes. Aside from using a smaller battery, one of the places the Bernie saves money is by using generic battery cells. In the long term, generic cells probably lose 5% more charging capacity over the course of 500 chargers, but keep in mind that's still 25,000 miles. When it's time to recharge, the Bernie 2 now comes with a single 5 amp charger that will take it from 0 to 100% in 6 hours. I like that the fan lets you know when it's charging, but the sound can get old if you have to be in the same room. Waterproofing has clearly been improved, though the IP rating remains at IP55, and the fenders, they're as good as ever. The motors can now be unplugged from the main harness, which comes in handy during tire changes. It now has a steering stop that's more resistant to bending, though the damper actually does that job now. Small improvements are everywhere. Fasteners have been upgraded to much larger heads on the rotor bolts, deck bolts, and fender bolts. And this may not seem like a big deal, but trust me, this will prevent a lot of stripped screw heads. And then there's the improved welding on the belly pan. It doesn't change the way it rides, but it really looks a lot better. Turn signals now wrap all the way around the back and look amazing, though they're partially blocked by the new motor plug. The display appears to be slightly brighter than our original Nami and, as always, includes a USB charging port for your phone. It's also got cruise control that lets you dial in your speed, but we're not sure how useful that really is on a beast scooter. Let us know in the comments, though, if you use it. We don't usually review the box itself, but let's just say the original box was not the most successful design. So we were happy to see the new Bernie 2 arrive double boxed and in excellent condition. The Bernie 2 weighs in at just 4.5 pounds less than the original, but it's still a 100 pound beast. It's not going to fit in your trunk or under your desk, and you're not going to want to carry it anywhere by yourself. You can still fit it into an SUV though. Some will criticize the non-folding handlebars and slow stem folding, but since this scooter just isn't very portable, we appreciate that they optimized for excellent handlebar and stem feel instead. The stem latch mechanism itself is unique, well-made, and ends up perfectly snug every time. In our previous review, we called out the short brake cable, and it's still a little too short, so be careful pulling up on the stem while folding. Also be careful to put your hand here and not here when lifting. We covered it in the previous review, but it bears repeating. The Bernie 2 is as safe as a beast scooter can be, with smooth throttle, excellent braking control, outstanding lights, and the coolest turn signals ever. Being able to control power delivery independently to the front and rear motors also means you could create your own rain mode, with less power to the front end, which would definitely make it safer to exit corners in the rain. Pros include amazing performance per dollar, unbeatable ride quality thanks to the adjustable shocks, and it's just really cool. Cons include dead space in the throttle, potential finger pinch point, and the short brake cable makes folding awkward. While you're doing your research, here are a few other beast scooters that have similar performance. The Nami Burn E2 Max, name brand battery and higher top speed, but also higher price. Wolf King GT Pro, best high speed stability, but 25 pounds heavier and more difficult to ride. Dualtron Thunder 2, 10 miles more range, but slower to 30 miles per hour and less comfortable ergonomics. So who is this scooter for? To be honest, the Bernie 2 and really all 100 pound beast scooters are for hardcore scooter enthusiasts. No one needs the performance of a 100 pound scooter for their commute, and you need to be a bit of a scooter nerd to appreciate the full tunability of this scooter. The Bernie 2 is for riders who enjoy rarity, long range, and the ride quality of a hand built premium scooter, but are willing to forego a name brand battery and eye watering top speed in order to save 1400 bucks. I'm honestly shocked at how good this scooter is for the price. This is the coolest scooter you can buy for about $3,500. Basically, it's the Ferrari of scooters at a Lexus price. Maybe they should have called it the Nami Burn E SE. Don't forget to use our exclusive $100 discount code and purchase link in the video description. As you can probably tell, it took a ton of hours of writing, testing, filming, and editing to make this video. If you like what we're making and want to support us, please like and subscribe. Right now would be good. That one there. And that other one right there. We've actually released two NAMI videos today. Click here to check out our pro tips on how to set up your NAMI for maximum performance. 
or if you want to see how the original Nami stacks up against other top scooters for larger riders, check out Raymere's awesome video with his top 5 picks.